All right. Hey, everybody. Jason right here with another episode of ThreatWise TV. And today we're talking with one of our technical partners, which is Threat Quotient. You may know him as ThreatQ as well. A uh, great threat intelligence platform that has gone a little bit above and beyond the call of a normal uh, technological partnership these days when it comes to integration with SecureX. And so I wanted to, to bring some friends on and uh, and talk a little bit about it. We've got Christian Gaiorda and Zach Shames who are a couple of threat intelligence engineers from Threat Quotient. So guys, thanks so much for joining the show. Appreciate having you. Pleasure to be here. Excellent. So, uh, you know, let's start with you, Christian. Tell us a little bit about the integration and what makes uh, the partnership and the technology between our two companies specifically uh, very unique and special. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for the folks that don't know, ThreatQ is a security operations and management platform. And what we've helped people do for years is manage their threat data, help turn that into usable, actionable threat intelligence. Now, as part of that, we've spent an enormous amount of time and engineering resources building up to 200 integrations. We're, we're just under that 200 point, including the standards like Sticks. And what I'm really excited about with this partnership is the ability to bring all of that information from uh, infrastructure, from threat providers, from you name it, and make it actionable and usable within the Cisco ecosystem with SecureX. Excellent. And and I know we talked earlier about uh, about how that specifically is going to kind of accelerate the level of integration and the number of integrations that SecureX has. So you kind of act as a as a broker in in that term. So. Uh, that would be uh, a very exciting aspect to to uh, to see. So why don't you uh, kick us off with a quick overview of the ThreatQ dashboard and what you're bringing to the table, and then we'll jump into what it looks like in, uh, in SecureX and in the broader scheme of things. Absolutely, Zach, if you wouldn't mind popping up the Threat Library. This is great. So what you'll see is a taste on the left-hand side of our object library. So things like adversaries, files, um, indicators, all of this is indexed, whether it's structured or unstructured. And we give our customers the ability to prioritize this intelligence based on the context that matters to them. So it's all going to be scored according to the things that are relevant to you. And from there, you'll be able to uh, focus on the things that matter to your organization within SecureX. Excellent. This is a beautiful dashboard and it's laid out really well here. And so I love that. So uh, let's let's talk about uh, a little bit more about how uh, this helps us get integrated and, and uh, like I said, exploit that ability to leverage these partnerships and, and these integrations within uh, the SecureX world. So as Christian mentioned, the ThreatQ Threat Library is essentially a consolidation of all the threat intelligence sources and that might be from your sticks feeds, your commercial feeds, maybe your SIM tool, really any other security tool in your system. Um, and so now what we wanna do is package up these malicious IOCs and export them out to SecureX so that we can actually use it and take action on it. And that's exactly what we've done through our integration here. Um, so these IOCs that you see here in this list are now exported out to SecureX via Cisco Threat Response's private intelligence module. So if I head over to Threat Response, you can actually see what I mean. So if we head into the intelligence tab to the judgments and then narrow it down by the private intelligence here, we can take a look at how the threat queue intelligence looks in uh, SecureX. So as you can see here, uh, it just looks like a list of IOCs. We can see the disposition, we can see the source, and if we need to, we could pivot back to threat queue, as well as uh, severity and confidence that's all coming from the normalized data and the scoring policy from within threat queue. Um, and what's really cool about that is, you know, not only are you getting the power of the 150 plus integrations coming from ThreatQ, but now you're actually able to leverage the threat intelligence that ThreatQ provides threat response to actually fuel other integrations that are already integrated with SecureX. And I'll show you what that means here. So when we export out the private judgments, we actually bundle them into an indicator list. And from here, we can actually take this indicator list and turn it into a feed. And so now this feed is gonna be provided to whatever tools already integrated with threat response and they're able to get threat use data that easily, that quickly, um, just by creating this new feed URL here. 
So that's going to start bringing things down from threat queue into uh, SecureX and threat response on an automated basis. Is that is that what we're seeing there? Correct. The users or the customers can configure how often they want it to start exporting data, and the uh, integration will honor that, and it'll push new IOCs and updated IOCs out to the private intelligence module, which then you can use within your casebook, within an investigation, within a feed, like I mentioned, you name it, you can use it throughout of SecureX. I would think we'd even be able to, to grab some of those with the uh, orchestration automation and and, uh, and start to say, hey, did anything that came in from ThreatQ appear in our uh, network? And if so, where and, and what? Um, and if you wanted to even some, take some action on isolating hosts, if you've uh, seen them uh, communicating with, with no malicious files or, uh, or IP addresses for sure. Exactly. And that's exactly where I was going and what I wanted to show next. So all this data and this private intelligence is fueling our SecureX dashboard. Right now we have widgets for um, threat grid as well as AMP for endpoints. And it's the private intelligence that's being exported from ThreatQ, which is what's uh, which is what's powering these widgets on the back end through the private intelligence module. Um, and like you said, if you wanted to actually automate this process and use SecureX and ThreatQ in an automated way, you can do that through uh, Action Orchestrator. And what we've done here, which I'm I'm really excited to show, is we've put together a whole bunch of workflows and atomic actions to allow you to interact with ThreatQ, whether it be asking ThreatQ what it knows about a given threat, or maybe just adding additional data to ThreatQ so that you know both Cisco products and ThreatQ product knows about a given threat, and it can share that information with the other security tools in your ecosystem. Uh, so what we've created here, like I mentioned, is a way to be able to look up relationships, look up attributes, look up other threat metadata, such as score, and then we can make decisions based on that. So if I head into our uh, actual uh, orchestrator here and the workflow, we can see how that workflow is uh, executed and what action it's going to take. So let's say that you get an IR ticket coming in from your ticket platform or your incident response platform. It has a few IOCs or observables associated with it. What do we do now? So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a, site, a corresponding citing event within ThreatQ so that ThreatQ knows about it, and then it can use that data to send to other security tools. And then the next thing we want to do is actually look up the IOC to figure out if it's malicious. Um, a lot of what this workflow does is build a uh, threat context list of uh, attributes and other metadata surrounding the IOC to then add it back to the actual IR ticket so that the IR team working in your IR platform can actually see that threat intelligence and if they need to use that for um, either working on the ticket or closing it out. But where this really becomes powerful is when we actually want to take action on it automatically. So what we're going to do next is check if the IOCs are malicious. If they are, we're going to want to create a corresponding CTR incident with it so that we can have our analysts look at it within CTR. And then we want to check the IOC type to make sure that we want to set block it a certain way. So if it's a networking IOC, we want to send it out to the firewall to be blocked before it even gets into our network. Or if it's a hash, we want to make sure that the host that that hash was found on is isolated and it can't harm any other things in our ecosystem. Um, and lastly, if things are found to be non-malicious, we just want to close out the ticket. What we want to avoid is our IR team wasting rounds working on tickets where IOCs associated with it are whitelisted or you know non-malicious in general. Um, and overall, this is going to save your team time um, and money in the long run. Well, absolutely. And for, for those who are a little bit newer to the, the orchestration that, that resides within SecureX, this is a, a beautiful way to create playbooks or workflows without uh, having to have a, a whole lot of coding experience or requirements. Uh, just a couple of APIs is usually all that's needed to, to tie these things together. And, and that level of integration here is already exists between our, our two companies. So you've got this ability to bring this stuff straight in, start looking around within your network and see if the IOCs and, and other warning signs exist. And if they do, you got a couple of actions here to go to the firewall or use your endpoint to 
uh, remediate a host. And then even the uh, the ticketing for uh, keeping track of any changes and events that have occurred is uh, real simple to go to either like a WebEx Teams and let you know, hey, here's what happened or to uh, like a third party service now uh, type of ticketing system or Splunk or something like that or some other integrations that we've we've uh, demonstrated. So, man, this looks absolutely beautiful. I, I really love seeing uh, uh, other partners get involved with the SecureX ecosystem and not only making you know our two companies and customers of our two organizations have these kinds of synergies and working together but uh but but really expanding the capabilities that uh that we could start to to get out of uh this technology here so so guys thanks so much for coming on to the show and and checking this out for us and showing our customers what we can do I want to make sure that our, our users know that there's always a few places you can go for more information of course if you want to see other videos there's a whole lot of those especially on securex at cisco.com slash go slash threatwise and if you want to learn more about securex obviously a lot of uh resources out there at cisco.com slash go slash securex but if you want to see a little bit more about specifically the integration between Threat Quotient and Cisco, go to threatq.com slash integrations slash Cisco, and you'll see a few other different resources up there that will uh, that will get you um, get your get your uh, <laughs> get you all wrapped up on what we're doing together and how we've been uh, been working to expand and 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 accelerate our integrations between these two companies. So for now, Ben, Jason, Wright, and Christian and Zach, thanks so much for tuning in and helping us out here. We really appreciate your help, and we'll see you all next time on the next episode of Threatwise TV.